came to the conclusion that, that we allow the robber class to rob us because we are born and raised and inculcated, indoctrinated with myths. Myths that, let a, that allow us to keep being robbed. So I thought of a title, Myth America, M-Y-T-H America. I don't have a, a lisp, but it's Myth America. And I, and I thought, well, that's a great title. I'm going to get up and write. I thought I was going to write an article because I write a lot of articles, and that's how I vent my frustration many times. But after I got up and started writing it, I realized it was too long for an article, that it was going to have to be a booklet. And after I'm off of this tour, I've been on it for two months now, over two months, two and a half months. I'll be on it for about another month and a half. Going all around the country from, you know, sea to shining sea and up and down, I have talked to people about this. I've, I've discovered more myths that I didn't write about. I've discovered more ways that people are stepping outside of robber class systems. I need to expand um, the book and make it a real book, but I also need to correct typos that I can't figure out how to do. Because <laughs> I put it in a PDF form. I don't know how to change it back into a Word form to change the typos. But anyway, yeah. And they're not, they're not that bad. Most people probably won't even notice them, but you know, if you're an English teacher, please correct it and send it back to me. <laughs> so, Linda. So I can, um, I can fix all that when I, when I do my second, second edition of Myth America. Now it's 10 Greatest Myths. I joke with people, by the time I'm finished, it'll be the 1,000 Greatest Myths of the Robber class. And it'll be volumes, not just, not just a book. So, um, I narrowed it down to 10 myths that I thought were relevant, that I thought is what keeps us bound to a system that is not healthy for us. It's not, the system is not healthy for us. We do have ways that we can make it healthier, but I see our, our safety nets eroding just like really fast that there, there might be a time when, you know, if we don't have each other, we won't have anything. So that's why I wrote the book. And I think our, I have an introduction, of course. And Myth America was my original title, but I'm inordinately fond of subtitles. So it has a subtitle, 10 Greatest Myths of the Robber Class in the Case for Revolution. And the foundational myth of this country is what all the other myths are based on. And that is that America is the greatest nation in the universe. Okay, aren't we told that from, from, yeah, from the time our families, our schools, the media, it's reinforced over and over and over again. Now, we're not even the greatest nation today. But to say that we're the greatest nation in history, we're the, we're the most dangerous empire right now, a military empire. I'm not sure we're the, we're the economic empire anymore. In fact, I know we're not. I'm just waiting for China to, to get lose all patience with us. But if there's another nation on another planet in another galaxy or solar system, we don't have to know anything about that nation. We don't have to know about its history, its culture, its way of life, its social structures, we already know we're better than that plant, that, that nation, right? That's why we, why, how we are here. You know why people can say that in, in Iraq we liberated the women by our invasion? It's because they didn't understand Iraq. They didn't know that Iraq was the most secular society in the Middle East before our invasion where they did have universal university education. Women were um, doctors, lawyers, whatever, professionals. They were highly educated. And so I, I told that to one right winger, and she's like, oh, how do you know? And I said, because I've met them, you know? So the reason cultures and others can be demonized is because we, and when I say we, I don't necessarily mean everybody here or anybody here, but we Americans as general, in general, are so parochial. 
You know, um, there's a joke. You call people who speak three languages trilingual, two languages bilingual, one language American. <laughs> you know, so so we're we're so we don't need to study. I, you know, when I'm in Europe, when I'm in the Middle East, when I'm other places, the average person there knows more about our current events, our governmental history, our history, than the average American does. And, and that's, that's intentional. If we find out that there's other cultures in the world, you know, then we might not think that ours is, is, is the best. We might think that we're good. And the, but they're good too. So that's about America, the greatest nation in the universe. I also like hyperbole. So the second Robert Class myth that I have a lot of experience with is elections matter. And Emma Goldman, a, one of my favorite revolutionaries, she said if elections made a difference, they'd make them illegal. <laughs> The third robber class myth is the center is where we live and breathe, and that's the robber class myth that there's a significant difference in the robber class between Democrats and Republicans. Now, I recognize the difference in the robbed class. There is a significant difference, but in the robber class, not so much. The fourth robber class myth is also something I have significant experience with, unfortunately. It's called, It's Noble to Die in Robber Class Wars. The fifth robber class myth is the Federal Reserve System cares about you. And since, and since I like subtitles, that one is or it's federal or reserve is a myth. Number six is it's a privilege to pay taxes to the robber class. Number seven is health care, quality education, housing, and healthy food are also privileges. And aren't, isn't that what we're told that if we don't have these things then there must be something wrong with us there's nothing wrong with the system there's something wrong with us and those are the, what I just read those are basic human rights for every human being in the world but in our country they're just rights for the robber class and for us they're, they're privileges and if we want health care they tell us there's no money but if Wall Street wants a trillion dollars, guess what? There's money. Um, the ninth robber class, oh wait, I skipped number eight. Eight is America has a free press. That's something I have a lot of experience with. The ninth robber class myth is the environment who needs it. And the tenth robber class myth is, is what I believe is a foundational myth to where we are today. And that's 19 Muslims with box cutters cause 9-11. And no matter what, you can clap, you can clap. You know, so I see people trying, I see people going, they don't want to feel weird because they're the only ones clapping. But if you start it, other people will follow. So that's, that myth is not so much a, a, that I come out and say, you know, um, Dick Cheney was in his bunker, you know, between um, heart operations, planning 9-11. You know, that's the extreme position. And the other extreme position is to believe the official story, right? Why would we believe anything Dick Cheney or George Bush says? Why? Why? <laughs> 